We're running out of time, Not. and we have to do this one. Um, there is a there's a new Lorena Bobbitt in town. <laughs> This is why I didn't want in, to do this. Investigators believe 48-year-old Catherine Q. Becker had a plan that was calculated. They believe she served her husband dinner laced with drugs at their Garden Grove condo last night. When her husband passed out, she tied him to their bed, allegedly cut off his penis with a 10-inch kitchen knife, placed his body part in the garbage disposal, and turned it on. Then she called 911. Now the garbage disposal what was what mean. really gets me in this story. But you know what? I'm kind of surprised that we don't see more Lorena Bobbitts out there that we don't hear about stories like this more often. I just figure that there would be more women, angry, angry women, chopping up more penises. Why are you encouraging this? <laughs> this is a horrific story. We all it's know that a woman scorned is an here. ugly thing. I'm surprised there are more penises being thrown in the garbage disposal. I think one interesting standout about this story today is the amount to which men seem a lot more affected by it. Just the men in our office have been really disturbed by the press attention this has gotten. It's absolutely horrific. And I, frankly, I just want to leave because I just don't want to talk about this. It hurts me. It hurts me deep in my soul. I'll stop, I'll stop laughing at the possibility <laughs> of, of the misery of many men out there. All right, guys, thanks for joining me. All right, it's time for You Said It, I Read It, where I take time to respond to my brilliant and engaging viewer comments from Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, because when you've got something to say, I listen. Now, first, I'd like to address a happy hour segment that aired before I went on vacation, where I introduced and commented on a story about a woman cutting off her husband's penis. Now, my reaction, which was in jest, offended some of my viewers who felt that I made light of the very serious issue. So please, let me take this time to address some of the criticism that we've heard so far. Now, a lot of you out there were upset because you felt like I was laughing at the issue and then encouraged violence. And that's simply not true. I clearly stated on air that I do not condone, condone that type of violence. Now, if I offended you by not acting serious enough, then I apologize, but do not put words in my mouth. Now, some of you took a more simplistic approach and said that my reaction to this story was a clear indication that I hate men. That's just ridiculous. I don't really know how to be more clear on the matter. I, Alona Minkowski, do not hate men. In fact, I really like them. And finally, some of you have even suggested that because of my reaction to the story, I deserve to have violence inflicted upon me. Some viewers suggested that I have my breasts chopped off, that I be raped. Now, if you've got a problem with something that I said, then that's fine. But please don't pretend to take an issue with my statements, which you thought encouraged violence, and then turn them around and wish the same on me. That, my friends, is a little thing I call hypocrisy. I'm kind of surprised that we don't see more Lorena Bobbitts out there, that we don't hear about stories like this more often. I just figure that there would be more women, angry, angry women, chopping up more penises. Why are you encouraging this? What did we put in the water for that? I don't know. <laughs> Men out there, brace yourselves, because we're about to go there, because <laughs> this woman, we're about to go there because this woman allegedly did. According to the Orange County DA's office, Catherine Q. Becker is accused of cutting off her husband's penis with a knife, uh, taking his penis, and throwing it into the garbage disposal. <laughs> She's been charged with felony torture and aggravated mayhem. Police say Becker attacked him because he filed for divorce. She's being held. She goes, that'll teach him. <laughs> she is being held in a California jail while her husband remains in the hospital. I bet you that those prison guards are wearing one of those, what are those things that the football is wearing? Those oh, metal cups. Oh, oh yeah, the, uh, that the athletes wear. Yes, the yes. Jock straps. Cups, cups. Cups, cups. Yes. yes. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I don't know the circumstances. I don't know why he filed for divorce. I don't know what was going on between them. However, <laughs> I do think it's quite fabulous. I mean... <laughs> Whizzing around the disposal. It's like yeah. hysterical. 
But, however, I think I would have just, depending on why she cut it off, I mean, it does depend on the reasons why. Does it? Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll think of one. <laughs> I'll just, I would have just thrown it in the dog's bowl. Oh. Oh. Why does a dog have to suffer? <laughs> it, chewing on an old bone. <laughs> Lorena Bobbitt, the, the Bobbitt case, yeah. where Love her. she kind of did that Love first. Her. I like candles by her picture. Yeah. Oh, you love Bobbitt? <laughs> well, at least she didn't put it in the garbage disposal, so there was a, they went and they found it in a field somewhere, right. and they were able to reattach it. But once you put it in the garbage disposal, I guess there's no reattaching that well, bit. <laughs> Like, was she like, oh, I cut it up, but that's not enough. I'm going to throw it in the garbage disposal. And like, then turn it off. She wasn't satisfied by just cutting it off. Just, <laughs> you know. I don't know that there's anything that my husband could do to make me that mad, though. Oh, I can think of some. Really? <laughs> <laughs> All right, like what? <laughs> no, like what? it's actually not funny. I, I just said that to be funny. But there are, there are things that I don't want to say because we're, we're, we're laughing about it and it's fun. But I can think of one thing. That, that a man can do that I would consider chopping up his stuff. Mm. Oh my and goodness. what is it? it, it Cheating. No, it's not cheating. No, like it's, a. I, yeah, I, like I think a, I got no, it. No, I, I, yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you. What is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, you know, like a bad crime kind of mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I was also thinking, like, I wonder what their fights were like before this. Like, <laughs> that's right, a good right. point. What their fights were like, do you, oh, if you don't take out the trash, I'm going to cut your penis off. <laughs> <laughs> right, if you see it coming. Yeah, right. totally. Well, there's signs. But totally. allegedly, there's so much premeditation. There's poisoning the food and, or drugging him sure. and tying him up and yeah. then when the police got there she was like he deserved it he's in there right. <laughs> that's what she said I do want the police then? she did oh that was nice <laughs>to be like a total buzzkill mm -hmm. but it is a little bit like sexist like if somebody cut a woman's breast off no one would be sitting laughing like it's not that right to sit around laughing about it if we think about it it's different though it is different one's floppy and <laughs> one just up like that it's easy to do that some are floppy both can be floppy it's just, okay let's just put that out there well to the talk. <laughs> Welcome to the talk. Last Thursday on the show, we talked about Catherine Q. Becker, the woman making headlines for allegedly cutting off her husband's penis. It was a free-flowing conversation, and we all weighed in. Well, <laughs> no, um, I would like to say something that I do not condone genital mutilation. <laughs> you okay, Cher? <laughs> okay. Um, Look, you want me to start? Yeah. Okay. What I know about Sharon and the ladies at the table is that we really mean no harm when we say things. Sharon is the person who says things, we, make, we all laugh, she, she means no harm by it. So I, I know that about every one of you. There, there's no ill intent, but it's not easy doing a live show five days a week, and we wish we can say the right thing all the time, but we can't, it's hard. We can't look good all the time, we can't say the right thing, we can't be funny all the time. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have looked at you when I said that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Maybe just, you wanted just, my comfort, because you're not funny all the time. Yes, I did. Thank you. Thank you for picking me up, sister. Oh, no, thank yeah, you. You're Leah. welcome. It's, it's just, it, I do not condone genital mutilation. And <laughs> <laughs> However, <laughs> I do think it's quite fabulous. Imagine that thing whizzing around the disposal. It's like yeah. hysterical. I didn't mean any harm by laughing about it and I'm sorry that I offended people because that's not my intention or the intention of this show. Right. It's not what we're about. Exactly. Absolutely. So yeah. I apologize. Well thank said. you. And yeah. thank you for speaking from your heart.
are listening to the emergency broadcast system. We have been asked to broadcast emergency information immediately. We will bring you other emergency information uh, the moment we receive it. Imagine you're a woman wanting to get out of a marriage. You file for divorce. Your husband, whom you still have to live with, angry and bitter over the fact that you want a divorce, decides one night to drug your dinner. You fall asleep, and when you wake up, you find yourself tied to your bed. Then imagine your husband over you in between your legs with a knife as he begins to mutilate your genitalia. The parts he can cut off, he then goes into the kitchen and throws down the garbage disposal. Imagine then having to be rushed to the hospital to save your life for the doctors to close off major veins and arteries before you bleed to death. Imagine the man that you love saying the entire time that you deserved it. Now imagine turning on the TV, seeing a panel of men on a talk show laughing and making light of what happened to you. Saying you deserved it and it was fabulous. What would most people think if a story like that were true? I think majority of people would be not only appalled, I think they'd be outraged. I think you would see a lot of women, a lot of activists, a lot of feminists coming out against something like that. You would hear a lot of talk about education. You'd have a lot of anger towards men, especially the men on that panel. And society as a whole would be appalled. Now let's reverse the role. What if it was the man that was strapped to the bed? And it wasn't a vagina being mutilated, but a penis being cut off and thrown down a garbage disposal. Would it make any difference to you? Well, it made a difference to a few women from the show, talk show, The Talk, in, uh, including and especially to Sharon Osbourne, who is, from what I take, a head host there on that show. You know, as a woman, not only do I find this absolutely horrific, disturbing, appalling, but I don't even know what's worse. The act that happened to this poor man or the fact that women of all people were the ones to laugh and make light of it. How do we, as women, expect men to be compassionate and empathetic to us when we talk about serious topics like rape and abuse? and equality. How can we expect the same kind of open heart and kindness when as a group we're not willing to show any? You know the only way you can stop something like this is to end the tolerance. Being apathetic being complacent, 
only perpetuates the sickness. And that's what this is. It's a sickness. It's almost like a bitterness that needs to end. But I know I'm, I don't stand alone in this. I'm not the only woman that feels this way. I think it's important now for us to band together and to speak out. Just as we would expect men to do the same. Boycott CVS. Boycott the show. Do whatever you can to be active and to let everyone know that we stand as one. There is no division. Everyone is entitled to freedom over their bodies. Everyone is entitled not to have their personal space invaded. No group is above that. County woman appeared in court for sentencing this morning. Catherine Q was convicted of drugging her estranged husband and cutting off his penis. Eyewitness News reporter Christina Salvo joins us live from the Santa Ana courthouse with details. Christina. Well, Leslie, the judge sentenced the defendant, Catherine Q, to life in prison today. He said in his some 20 years on the bench trying various different murder cases, this was as cold and calculated as a murder. Now, the defendant walked into the courtroom today in handcuffs and never looked at her ex-husband as he read the, his in, victim impact statement. Q was convicted in April of drugging, at the time her estranged husband, tying him up and then cutting off his penis and putting it in the garbage disposal. The couple was married for a year and a half before the crime was committed. Q was born in Vietnam and claims she suffered mental health problems as well as from, the abu as well as from abuse growing up in a war-torn country and from her ex-husband, abuse that the victim denies. In his victim impact statement, he told the judge that Q stole his identity and crushed his optimism forever living a happy life in the future. And though he didn't want to go on, or th though he didn't want to uh, reveal his identity on camera, he did speak to us about what it was like addressing the court and his ex-wife. It was traumatic. Uh, there was a lot of anxiety in me at that point. Um, I'm hoping that this will be the last time I ever have to see her. Um, but uh, I felt some relief, and also it was a very sad day for everyone involved. Now, the defense told the judge that Q was remorseful for what she had done and asked the judge for probation, probation that the judge denied. Live in Santa Ana, Christina Salvo, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Well, you know, I, I like to bring you uh, some unusual and odd stories from around the world, but right. sometimes uh, we run into an issue where we don't have any video for this particular story. Uh, so I have to improvise. Okay. And so now, without further ado, uh, it's, it's crayon news story time. Crayon news story time. Oh, I love this. I am so Now, ready. this story I'm going to tell you happened last week in China. It's going to, to make you cringe. It's going to make you be like, what? What? Yeah. What? Yeah. Uh, but it's about a woman scorned, and we all know that's a recipe for disaster. Uh, she found out her husband was cheating on her. So, oh. Oh. while he was sleeping... Oh, oh, she went oh into my. his room. Uh huh. Uh huh. She, there you see, he's sleeping. She's saying, "I'm going to show you." Uh, she, here, here's where crayon news gets tricky. I can't draw the appendage that she decided to cut uh, off. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I can't draw it. I just can't show it on TV. Yes. Uh, which should give you a good idea. I think I might have shown something similar earlier in the show. So, for the purposes of this story, uh, the certain appendage will be represented by right here, a teddy bear. Ah. <laughs> oh. All right. So after finding out her husband, with whom she already had five children with, was cheating on her, oh she went in sleep while he was sleeping and cut off his teddy bear. Oh my gosh. Now, the good news is, is the man was able to actually drive himself to the hospital. Oh. Uh, there, he actually changed his, uh, his, his pajamas, too. Yep. Able to drive himself back to the hospital. Doctors were able to get the teddy bear back where it belongs. Right? No. So he was, able, not, he was able to rescue the teddy bear. That's not where this story ends, though. While the man is sleeping... Again? She breaks into the hospital. Oh, I'm gonna, what? I'm going oh, to get you again. You've got to be kidding me. She no. cuts his teddy bear off. She is mad. <laughs> what? Right? what? She's not playing. 
She's going to make sure that he never gets his teddy bear back again either because this time she decided to <laughs> throw it out the window. Oh, uh, you can see he's just saying, no. No, of that. course he's saying that. It's his teddy bear. I just snorted. Doctors were trying to get his teddy bear back, uh, but they think maybe oh it got picked up by a stray dog <laughs> and was never seen again. However, like I said, this is a happy story, happy ending. It's if a happy can, ending? If there can be a happy ending. Now, obviously, that marriage is done, but the mistress that he was cheating on her with, she doesn't care. She still loves him. You're kidding. Without wow. his teddy bear. <laughs> and they are going to live happily ever after. The end. Wow. That, was, that just was a roller coaster of, emo of emotions. But, but, and we're really actually getting real news here. Right. That's Crayon news. Corey. Crayon news. Thank I mean, you very know, much. When you don't have video, you got to do something. Wow, Corey. Thank that you. was impressive. There's nothing funny about this story. <laughs> no, there really isn't.